Council meeting tonight. We, uh, those of you who are here in the audience, get the extra special opportunity to see the uh, the swearing in of our elected officials this evening. And I want to acknowledge a special Girl Scout Brownie troop that's right here. And there's Ellie Coleman, who's uh, uh, sort of brought some of her friends down. But they, these young leaders right here of the future, have come down to witness. <laughs> All the great things that happen in city council. So, uh, Chris, you're not going to make them stay for the whole thing, are you? <laughs> no. Oh, <right. laughs> but so, if you guys will all stand up, and then we're going to have you come up after a while, maybe take a little picture or something. So, let's give these brownies a great big hand. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess I am going to be the first one to be uh, sworn in, so. All right. Is this on? It's on. Okay. Would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Thomas Michael, Franklin County. I, Thomas Michael, Franklin County. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. The Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge all the duties. Discharge all the duties of the office of mayor of the office of mayor in the city of Des Moines, Iowa in the city of Des Moines, Iowa as now or hereafter required by law is now or hereafter required by law. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to our, our next swearing in, I just want to thank uh, all the people of the city of Des Moines uh, for allowing me to serve you and uh, all the things that together that we have accomplished over the past eight years and hopefully we'll accomplish even more over the next four. But uh, it's all of us working together, this great city council that we have. Now I will tell you that we don't always agree on every single thing, but we found ways over the last eight years to work hard together and uh, work for the benefit of all the people of Des Moines. And I, uh, working with neighborhoods, individuals, businesses, and all of us coming together for a, a great plan and a great vision for our future. So let's continue to work together and uh, some more great things are gonna happen. Next, I wanna bring up Council Member Chris Coleman, our at-large city council person to be uh, sworn in, uh, in for his next term. This is my wife, Marcy. Uh, most of you probably know Marcy. Yep. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Chris Coleman. I, Chris Coleman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge all duties. Discharge all duties. Of the Office of At-Large City Council Member. Of the Office of At-Large City Council Member. In the city of Des Moines, Iowa. In the city of Des Moines, Iowa. As now or hereafter. As now or hereafter. Required by law. Required by law. My uh, my my folks are uh, have never not been here before when I got sworn in, and I think 
that they're online right now. One of the great things, if you haven't watched it before, if you're not by a TV, you can still watch your city council people live streaming online. Um, I don't know why you would necessarily do that. But, uh, but I hope my parents did right now, so I wanted to say, uh, say hi to them. Uh, I appreciate the chance to serve. Many of you have heard me tell this story before. It was about 13 years ago that I first got sworn in, and one of my council member colleagues uh, who sat up here, I had never met before, and right before I came out and uh, had the, um, the, the swearing-in ceremony, he said to me, well, young Mr. Coleman, you got a lot of people out there for you, but let me assure you this, friends come and go, but enemies accumulate. <laughs> I was, I was pretty fired up uh, until that uh, comment. <laughs> but I say that only to tell you thanks uh, for the opportunity to serve. Doing this, um, you can't help but uh, offend people occasionally, and, and you can't always make people happy. But it's been a very uh, rewarding experience to know that um, my closest friends and family have stayed with me and supported me, so thank you very much. My, uh, my part of my family is here. We have people in activities after school and uh, a son at college now. Um, Ellie is over here, she's one of the brownies and she's a third grader and Katie is right here. And when I first got elected, if you can believe it, Katie was about that big and we had to carry her around and now uh, she'll be off to high school next year. So thank you all for the uh, opportunity to serve. We have a great city made by a great city staff, professional team. Uh, everybody that works here, so it makes it a joy to serve the city when you have that many great people backing you up. So thank you for coming. Thanks, Mars. Our, our next person, Bob Mahaffey, our Ward 2 Council Member. That was McPherson, by the way. <laughs> He knew what he was talking about. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Robert Mahaffey. I, Robert Mahaffey. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge all the duties. Discharge all the duties of the office of the War II Council Member. Of the War II Council Member. In the city of Des Moines, Iowa. In the city of Des Moines, Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. This, if you didn't know, is my wife, Joanne. I have our daughters and, and granddaughter here also. And it's been a pleasure to serve you, and I'm looking forward to the next four years. I think we've accomplished a lot, but we don't just admire what we've done. We need to continue to work towards the betterment of our city. So thank you for uh, electing me. I just want to say that I uh, forgot before we bring our next uh, council member up, my granddaughter who's here for my her first opportunity to witness a swearing in, and she has great shoes. I got <laughs> All right, Brian Meyer, and I get the privilege of swearing you in. Brian, repeat after me. Raise your right hand. I, Brian Meyer, I, Brian Meyer, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and that I will faithfully and impartially, to the best of my ability, that I will faithfully and impartially, to the best of my ability, discharge all of the duties, discharge all of the duties of the office of Ward Four Council Member. The office of Ward 4 Council Member in the City of Des Moines, Iowa. In the City of Des Moines, Iowa. Is now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Coleman, do you want to bring the little brownie troop up here and let's take a quick picture? Yeah. Up here. What do you think? Is that all right? Come on, girls. Why don't you come up real quick? Yay! Come on. 
I'd like to bring city staff up that's going to participate in um, our proclamation regarding the celebration of the uh, uh, the time capsule for City Hall. Are they in the room? Are you guys doing it? On June 14th of last year, we had a celebration of laying the cornerstone of City Hall. And I think you may remember it. We had uh, a festival outside. We had some cookies. We had a lot of fun. And today is we are going to be closing up the time capsule for the next hundred years. The building was actually opened on January 1st, 2012, so it took uh, about 18 months to build. So today, if you went, if you spent some time out in the Great Hall, you'll have saw there was a table there with some things that we put together for the for the um, new time capsule. We tried to, I think, have a put some things that we're proud of as city employees and city residents and also bring a little levity to it so they would know in the future that we had a good time and that we were very proud of our city. And um, we tried to also think about things that, if you think about what a time capsule is, it should provide to the next hundred years what this hundred years did. What would historians not have access to in another hundred years? So we were trying to provide that information to them too so they would know a little bit about how city government worked and a little bit about what we thought about our city. All right, so quickly to uh, acknowledge this moment, proclamation reads as follows. To celebrate the first century of the Des Moines City Hall in a time capsule to be opened in 2112. Whereas on January 1st, 2012, the municipal building now known as City Hall celebrated its 100th anniversary after its opening on January 1st, 1912. And whereas those citizens attending the 1920 1912 City Hall Open House celebrated the newly enacted progressive Des Moines plan form of government with new spacious building designed so that the business would open and occur with citizens treated like customers, which is still true in 2012. And whereas for the past 100 years, the city of Des Moines has been a good steward of City Hall which has been recognized as a national landmark in the Riverfront Civic Center Historic District with a city hall of 2012 retaining many of its original architectural features while incorporating changes in departments, personnel, technology, and energy conservation. And whereas City Hall continues to welcome the public at twice monthly council meetings in the city 
council chambers, which are open to the public as well as broadcast live and streamed on the internet, that have agendas of 75 or more items and to 30 public boards and commission meetings each month with citizens volunteering their time and knowledge to advise the city council on a wide range of issues. And whereas a time capsule containing various items of interest to Des Moines and city government was placed in the northeast corner of this structure and it is being constructed at that time in 1910 and opened in 2010 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the construction of the building. And whereas it is now appropriate to create a new time capsule with mementos of life in Des Moines and city government to give future generations a sense of what Des Moines was like in 2012. And whereas, while change is a constant as we work to improve our city, proclamations such as this with its whereases and now therefores haven't changed that much in what seem very familiar to our 1912 citizen and maybe to our 2112 citizens. Now therefore, this City Council congratulates Des Moines on its past 100 years that are rich in monumental milestones that have made Des Moines worthy of many national awards and recognition it has received. And we look eagerly forward to the future for this city and take pride in our productive, committed employees. Be it further resolved that this time capsule, which provides descriptions of various city departments and their functions in Des Moines, as well as some items selected to show what a typical workday in City Hall was like in 2012, should be open in 2112. And be it finally resolved, the opening of this time capsule finds Des Moines to be a rich and healthy city. And I sign this on behalf of the City Council uh, as mayor. So thank you all and thank all of you citizens for attending. Um, this is a great moment and a great occasion and let's hope the next 100 years is, is good to our citizens and good to the state of Iowa is the last time we have. And let's thank this group that has put this together. Let's give them a start our council meeting just a moment.
Yeah, am I permitted now to yeah. proceed? Okay. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, our first order of business this evening is to call to order the Municipal Housing Agency Governing Board. Uh, I would like now to have the clerk take roll, please. County? Here. Coleman? Here. Moore? Here. Grease? Here. Mahaffey? Here. Hensley? Here. Meyer? Here. We Here. have a quorum. Item 2 is approving the contract for pest control services with preferred pest control Brad Smith president estimated annual cost at $154,800 <clears throat> board communication number 12-008 is there anyone in the audience to speak on this item I'll move. All right, it's been moved. Any discussion? Hey, Doug, I've got one question. Where are you? You don't. This is 008. Where's 001 through 7? Your item number is 12 008. I'm assuming there were seven <laughs> items before that somewhere. I'm not sure I didn't put the, the uh, agenda together, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see them maybe as the year goes on. It's been moved. Any discussion? Seeing none. Seven yes. All right. That's the only item on our agenda. Could we have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Item passes. Uh, prior to our starting of the Des Moines City Council meeting this evening, uh, we're going to do a, a, a quick invocation. Our council member, Chris Coleman, uh, has a few words, and those who would participate with us would ask you to stand at this time. As several of us begin a new four-year term and the rest of us are in the middle of um, our other term, I, um, I found this um, poem, Reflection, as a, as a way to focus our work. An old grandfather said to his grandson, who came to tell him with anger at a friend who had done him an injustice, let me tell you a story. I, too, at times have felt a great hate for, hate for those who have taken so much with no sorrow for what they do. But hate wears you down and does not hurt your enemy. It is like taking poison and wishing your enemy would die. I have struggled with these feelings many times, he continued. It is as if there are two wolves inside of me. One is good and does no harm. He lives in harmony with all around him and does not take offense when no offense is intended. He will only fight when it is right to do so and in the right way. But the other wolf... Ah, he is full of anger. The littlest thing will set him into a fit of temper. He fights everyone all the time for no reason. He cannot think of his anger and hate are so great. It is helpless to anger, for his anger will change nothing. Sometimes it's hard to live with these two wolves inside of me, he said, for both of them try and dominate my spirit. The boy quietly looked into his grandfather's eyes and asked, which one wins, grandfather? And the grandfather smiled and quietly said, the one that I feed. Bless our work. Let's have a good term and a good year. Thank you. <coughs> Ask the clerk to take roll, please. County? Here. Coleman? Here. Moore? Here. Grease? Here. Mahaffey? Here. Hensley? Here. Meyer? Here. We have a quorum. All right. Item Roman numeral one is approving the reappointment of the following. A is the city manager. B is the city attorney. <coughs> C is the city clerk. D is the chief deputy city clerk. And E is the Deputy City Attorney and Assistant of City Attorneys. Is there any discussion by anyone at the council table? 
Any I'll questions, move. anybody? We have a hand up. Oh, Bob Wessel. Bob Wessel, yeah. Bob? Did you want to speak on this, Bob? Did you want to step forward, Bob, and say something? Did you want to speak to the uh, microphone? These appointments, uh, city manager, city attorney, city clerk, chief deputy, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I only have one problem. I asked Rick to retire her some time ago, and I'm not at all in agreement that the city manager should be reappointed. In fact, I think a time element comes in that. When Eric Anderson left, I, th I think you made Rick a kind of a interim or temporary uh, for a period of time, and I suspect that time's even up. But we're not getting things done the way we should get things done. It doesn't lie all on Rick, but, but he's a portion of it. Thank you. All right, we had a comment. Anybody else? Seeing none, do we have a motion? I'll move item 1A through E. All right, any discussion? Hearing none. Seven yes. Uh, Roman numeral two is a recommendation by myself to appoint the mayor pro tem for 2012, and uh, I submit to you my recommendation is Skip Moore, our junior council member at large. I'll make that motion. All right. Do you agree not to miss any meetings? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best, sir. Seven yes. Item two is approving the agenda as presented and or as amended. I'll move. It's been moved. Seven yes. Item three is approving the consent agenda, which tonight are items 3 through 35. These are routine items that are enacted as one vote, unless somebody, either from the audience or a city council member, pulls it for further discussion or clarification. This evening, Council Member Hensley wishes to speak on 4C. Uh, council Member Hensley wishes to speak on 23. Mayor, I'll withdraw 23. Okay. And item 32, Councilmember Hensley votes no. Anybody in the audience have any other items that they would like to discuss? Uh, 3 through 35. Seeing none, could we have a motion for the. Move. Seven yes. Item 4C is approving alcoholic beverage license applications for the following. In this case, it's a uh, 4C, which is Quick Trip number 544 at 3941 Southeast 14th Street. It's an E liquor license application. Mrs. Hensley. Um, I just want to bring to our attention again, um, there was the uh, item D that was withdrawn from the uh, council agenda, but we've got new liquor stores that are basically going in. Um, you have a setting a date of hearing on a uh, company that's requesting that we amend a PUD so that they would be allowed to sell liquor. Um, and all of these are within just a couple blocks of each other. So, um, you know, it really is a significant problem. And I think that we all need to continue to highlight this uh, with the legislature. And um, because nobody wants to have the, we would never allow the number of liquor stores to go into neighborhoods that we're seeing that are developing as a result of this legislation that was just passed um, a year ago. 
And if we were to look back at what's happened the last couple of council meetings, I bet uh, we probably have added um, 13 to 15 new liquor stores all in neighborhoods. And I think that's a big problem. I'd like to add to that that we've got a new uh, convenience store in town that uh, they were going to request liquor at two of their stores and due to the neighborhoods asking them not to, they agreed. And now I wonder how they feel about making that agreement with the neighborhoods. And uh, I praise them for doing it. And I hope, I hope they continue not having liquor in those stores. But I think some of the others should take a look at what they're doing and uh, maybe decide not to have liquor in all of them. I would agree. So I, I make that, I'll just, um, I'm not asking for action here other than just to continue to highlight it so that um, as we're up at the Capitol that we can bring it to all of the legislators' attention. And uh, maybe what we need to do is actually send a letter outlining what's transpired since that went into effect. I know we've discussed it at MAC. Unfortunately, we're not, they're not, other communities are not seeing the impact yet. It's really what's transpiring and occurring in the city limits of Des Moines. Because they don't have as many convenience stores as we have in the city of Des Moines. Correct. And it, I think it's just destroying some of our neighborhoods, all the liquor stores that are there. So rather than just to receive and file, I <coughs> guess I would ask that we do a draft letter that would go to the legislature outlining the impact and the number that have come online um, and asking them, making them aware of it, and then we'll take hopefully some action to see if we can change it. M Mrs. Hensley, council members, I think that's a terrific idea, and we will draft something up for your signature. I would also say that some of the testimony that you've heard uh, uh, at, at your meetings from neighbors and residents about uh, these establishments, I find very compelling. And I think as we go forward, there's got to be a way that we can tap that uh, citizen sentiment, if you will, uh, and, and bring that to the attention of legislators as well. I think that's a powerful voice. I think we ought to find ways to tap that and add it uh, as one of the things that we do with our friends in the legislature. Maybe what we could incorporate would be some of the quotes, and I know they were here earlier. I don't know if they still are, but the uh, is it the Shop and Save that was on 6th Avenue, Hallie, and your? We could incorporate some of those comments that um, we heard at the council meeting into that letter, and um, I think that would be very, very effective. Well, we even had the thought, perhaps, of, of uh, doing some sort of a video or a, a DVD that we could take along and show to folks, because I, as I say, I think their, their actual testimony was really compelling uh, on all the points. Okay. So, so we'll that would that. be my motion. Six yes, one no. OK. Um, that moves us on to item 36. And prior to starting, I would like to have everybody check their cell phones if they can and make sure that they're in the off position so that uh, we won't have them going off in the middle of our council meeting. Appreciate it very much. First item um, after consent is the ordinances. Our first consideration. Item 36, amending Chapter 114, the Municipal Code regarding traffic regulation changes as follows. A, is a 10-hour parking meters on the south side of Grand, west of 13th Street. B, is the removal of special school loading and unloading restrictions on 5th Avenue from Grand Avenue to Locust Street. C, is the parking citations for illegal off-street parking. D is an extension of existing loading zone south side of the 400 block of Watson Powell Jr. Way. E is the parking restrictions due to the intersection improvements on the north side of Hull Avenue, east of East 14th Street. And F are the adjustments to the loading and unloading times adjacent to the Walnut Street School, the west side of 9th Street, and the east side of 10th Street, north of Walnut to Locust Street. Council communication number 12-004. Is there anyone in the audience to have comment on any of these items which are amending our municipal code and traffic regulations? Seeing none, could we have a motion? I'll move 36A through F. All right, it's been moved. 36A through F. Seven yes. All right. <laughs> Our next item is item 37. Item 37 uh, has to do with uh, the uh, Stewart 
Square Park. We've had a, uh, uh, over the weekend uh, and last week late, a number of requests for folks to speak. I thought that maybe what we ought to do is have those folks uh, speak, and, and I think we'd like to uh, not have repetitive comment. Uh, I think we'll allow everybody uh, maybe up to three minutes to speak, and then we would uh, um, ask that um, uh, we move on into the, uh, the balance of our agenda, and uh, we'll receive all your comments, and uh, uh, then apply them as appropriately as, uh, as we can. Uh, the uh, item which Mrs. Hensley brought up had to do with uh, uh, to discuss strategy and permitting policy and exiting of uh, the Stewart Square Park. And uh, I will ask uh, the um, uh, speaker, I'm assuming that maybe you have some key speakers that you'd like to have speak. I'd like to have those people come to the uh, South side here uh, behind this first speaker. And uh, if you are interested in stepping up, we'd ask you to do so at this time and give us your name and address. Uh, Ed Fallon, 735 19th Street in Des Moines. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the uh, City Council. And I do mean thank you. Uh, and it's taken a lot of effort on our part as well, but, but you have been a tremendous um, uh, allies in this. And I look at what's happening around the country, and, um, and hopefully uh, people can get more out of Iowa than just the Iowa caucuses. Maybe they can get an example of how it's possible to work with city officials, with the uh, police department, with the fire marshal, with the uh, parks officials. Um, it's not like there haven't been glitches or moments of disagreement or conflict, but overall it's been a very good, re good working re relationship. And I you know, commend you for taking the time to uh, make that happen, and also for people involved with the movement for making it happen. So, um, you know, I, and I... There will be other, some other people will point out too. I think the good things we've actually done at the park, which I think is an important thing to uh, to remind you about. But um, you know, ideally, in my ideal world, uh, we can find a way to let the camp continue. It's it's done good not just for the community but for for this movement nationally. And this is an important movement. You know, my almost 30 years of being involved with social change, I've not seen anything come along that has this much promise for really getting to some of the the root problems that we, uh, we, we face in this country, and so I'm very encouraged. And um, again, I'm encouraged by the city, city's willingness to work with us on seeing that this happens. So I, I would hope there'd be some way we could talk about a presence, because the physical occupation that has been at that park has been an important symbol of our commitment to fighting until we get some accountability in Washington and on Wall Street. And that that effort will continue because um, Congress is not purchased by Wall Street overnight, and we're not going to get it back into our hand overnight either. So, yeah, I'd like to see something continue. Um, in lieu of that, you know, I would hope that there would be no attempt to try to move things quickly. Uh, I mean, the 31st is quick enough. Uh, it's, it's hard for us to see how we can manage getting our ducks in a row, our house in order, so to speak, by the 31st. Although, again, given the the good rapport we've had with the city, I would expect that the, um, the uh, cooperative nature of that conversation would continue. But again, if there's any, um, any interest in, in speeding it up, like saying we've got to be gone by the end of the week, that would be really difficult because there are a lot of people there, a lot of uh, things have been moved there to accommodate the people who've been camping, to accommodate the meetings we've had, to accommodate the outreach we've tried to, tried to achieve. And so I would hope that at a minimum, um, the 31st would not be moved up. And again, I would hope beyond that that we might discuss ways in which we can continue the presence of this Occupy, um, uh, you know, this Occupy uh, symbol in some way, shape, or form, if not at Stewart Square, somewhere else in the city. Uh, thank you. And a question for you. Yes. Do you still have the space in the, is it the Hoburger building or the Teach Out building? Are you yes, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the long-term arrangement for that is, but it's a, that was, a, that was um, rented specifically for the uh, a caucus project, and uh, the intent is not, I don't think the intent is to keep that for an extended period of time, but I, again, I'm not entirely clear on that. There, there are others who have been working on that, and I can't tell you for sure what the plans are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is... Can you hear me? If yeah, sure. it'll pick yeah. it up. This way. Okay. All right. My name is Aaron Jorgensen Briggs. I live at 904 Walnut Street in Des Moines. <clears throat> uh, 
I'd like to begin my remarks this evening with a passage from the book of Matthew, chapter 25. <clears throat> then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. It has been said by members of the Des Moines City Council that the presence of the Occupy Des Moines community in Stewart Square Park has denied access to the park to the rest of Des Moines. In fact, the opposite is true. Occupy Des Moines has increased access to the park by making it cleaner and safer and by providing resources and activities and community space that are available to all. Tonight I'd like to use my speaking time to highlight for you the many positive impacts of the Occupy Des Moines presence in Stewart Square. Prior to Occupy Des Moines, Stewart Square Park was unsafe at night, a haven for drug dealers. Many of our neighbors have testified to this fact, and when we cleaned the broken glass from the sand on the playground, we also found needles and other drug paraphernalia that testified to the park's old life. The presence of Occupy Des Moines in Stewart Square, which includes all-night security watches by members of our community, has restored the park to a family-friendly place where children can play safely. Many neighborhood children do play in the park now, and we have enjoyed getting to know them and their families. During our tenancy in Stewart Square, sanitation has been excellent, a fact the Parks Department has acknowledged. In addition to our efforts to be responsible for our, our own sanitation, members of our community have taken over many of the tasks normally performed by the city, including raking leaves, clearing down tree limbs and other storm debris from the park and sidewalks, shoveling snow, and removing the trash from the city's trash barrels. We've right. also made repairs to playground equipment. We need to ask you to kind of quickly Take a couple of seconds and wind it up, and I think you have one question over here. How much time has elapsed? Uh, three minutes. That's been three minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll just jump to the end. Uh, I was going to talk about sanitation. I was going to talk about the community resources that we provide. Um, uh, and finally, I was going to talk about the fact that we are providing resources directly to members of the Des Moines community uh, who are the most underserved. And uh, in, in closing, um, what I wanted to ask you, uh, Mayor and Council Members, uh, I wanted to ask you, what are your goals uh, with regards to these issues? What is your vision? What are you prepared to do to address the systemic realities of poverty and hunger and homelessness in Des Moines? Um, how do you intend to answer the call presented in the book of Matthew? All right, if you, if you have something that you'd like to submit, we could make that part of the record as well. You have a question right here from Mr. Meyer. My, my last sentence was, I'm asking you to work with, not against, Occupy Des Moines. Sorry for going over time. Mr. Meyer. <laughs> My question is, first off, I don't agree with the premise that it is a cleaner park, uh, but I will accept that premise for the sake of argument. Uh, I'm very familiar with the park. It's in my ward. I've had lots of complaints from neighbors. Um, but I will say this, that um, assuming that I accept your premise, 
that you've made it cleaner and you've made it nicer. And I want everybody to think about this because this gets to the point that I'm going to make at the end of all of your statements. And I agree with a lot of the sent sentiments that you guys are saying, okay? But it doesn't change the fact that if I agree with you, doesn't mean that you should be able to camp out for three months in a park because if it was the Ku Klux Klan camping out in Stewart Square Park, even though they kept it nice and clean and encouraged kids to come in and had games for them, it's no different. It's not about your message. This is about how we are going to maintain our parks. So I just want to I just want to let people know that that's what I'm thinking. I mean, do you have an answer for that? Is it um, if it, what is the question? The, the question is, is it different if it's the Ku Klux Klan that comes in instead of you guys, but they keep it nice and clean? Should we treat that differently? Yes. Well, but I think your, your point here is that we're going to treat everybody the same. We're going to treat everybody the same. But my point is, so, so you, you think we should, we should treat the Ku Klux, KKK differently than you guys? Yes. Why? <laughs> uh, but why? Because of the positive impacts of our presence in the park and because of uh, our agree, goals would, and would, our vision. Would you agree that they have the same First Amendment rights that you have? Yes. Okay, even though you may disagree with what they say. Correct. And we should treat them differently then? Yes. Okay. I, I think idea. before we evolve into a debate, we'd like to get the input and then move on with our council meeting. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Aaron. Our next speaker. Again, it's three minutes uh, if we choose to create to uh, quote verse. Uh, why that'll sometimes take up a lot of time, and we're going to uh, cut everybody off just at the at the time. So let's start this one right now. My name is Heaven Chamberlain. I am a resident of Des Moines, of uh, Des Moines, and I live on the east side of Des Moines. I am also a 16-year-old future taxpayer who comes before you today when I should be studying for my chemistry final, that is tomorrow. Because my constitutional rights and the constitutional rights of my many close friends, who I consider my family, are being infringed upon. I am here before you to say that the City Council of Des Moines, Iowa is not the Supreme Court and they should not be acting like it if they are the law of the land. Over 200 years ago, in the late 1780s, early 1790s, a second constitutional convention occurred. And during that convention, ten amendments were written down just to make it formal that you cannot deny an American citizen or any human certain unalienable rights. And the most important amendment of all those was the First Amendment, the freedom of speech, press, religion, and the right to peacefully protest. And our founding fathers reminded naysayers that we have these rights and people cannot infringe upon them. And we, the trampled, are allowed to fight back. Well, now the trampled are no longer a mat for people's feet to be wiped on. We are sick and tired, like naysayers, like uh, Councilwoman Christine Hensley saying, no, you cannot protest people who pay me the big bucks because they don't want you to. Councilman Hensley has said nothing but belittle us for the past three months. She's an advocate of the 1%, but she is still one of the 99. She just refuses to accept it. Now, she dares threaten a community that has created, been created in Stewart Square as we fight for social justice for both her and us. The excuses for moving the occupation from Stewart Square are hogwash. The claim that we keep people from enjoying the park during climate change is a lie. Parents feel safer sending their kids out to the park. Also, crimes and the stupidity in the park has greatly reduced. I am a student at East High School, and I, must, and I am aware of the stupidity that occurs when students used to jip and go down to Stewart Square to smoke pot. They can't smoke pot anymore because the occupation is there. So now they must return to school and actually attend. If anything, you guys should be thanking us for making sure we heads don't come down there and smoke pot. Now then, we have been reasonable, respectful, and good citizens. We have respect to the city and the park. But now a council who cannot determine the rights of a human race is overstepping the boundaries of, as a representative of the people. And I, as the future president, whose job is to uphold the law and enforce the law as the land, will not allow this council to infringe on my rights or anyone else's in this room without a good fight. Stop fighting this losing battle. Don't be pawns of the 1%. Even if you kick us out of Stewart Square, you will only make us stronger. Arresting us does not phase us. We are the face of social, just social justice. To come and we will be heard. If you kick Occupy and Wind out as we stand in solidarity with Occupy Wall Street and other similar protests worldwide from Stewart Square, 
then watch for me on the news on January 31st and February 1st. I'm a citizen of the United States and I represent part of the abuse and neglected 99%. And no Des Moines Council will stop me from being heard. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker, please. I'm going to make this uh, brief. We do have several... Uh, Could you give us Franklin's. your name, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, John Franklin. And your address, please. Oh, 2617 Linden Street, Des Moines, Iowa. <coughs> uh, we do have several uh, disenfranchised individuals that have become productive <coughs> members of this group. Several of them have health problems and have not been eligible for any resources. Two of the women are victims of abuse and do not feel safe staying at the shelters. Uh, we have fed and clothed others that have come through. We've fed a number of the local children, and children now feel safe to play in the park. Uh, I, I come before you today to ask you guys to please let us stay in the park and let this uh, go on, this positiveness that we're trying to uh, portray out to the public. Uh, and if you don't let us stay in the park today, I ask you guys to help us come up with a solution to find these place, these people somewhere safe to sleep at night. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Skip Moore. He uh, actually came down to the park one day when we first were there and just wanted to see what was going on and talk to us. Uh, I, I think that's awesome that somebody from the city council would come down and actually talk to the people. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say here. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, sir. Uh, yes, my name is Clark Davidson. I live at uh, 2305 Grand Avenue. Um, I serve, uh, first of all, I would like to make a motion to extend the uh, J31 deadline to um, uh, March 1st. Um, the reason for that is that um, a couple years ago we bulldozed some uh, buildings down by the river and uh, Reggie, as you guys I'm sure are aware of, uh, ended up freezing to death. Um, at our last stewards meeting, meeting uh, we have 17 individuals uh, who are full-time residents of the camp. Um, we're very concerned about where those individuals will go. Um, if they're not allowed to stay in the camp. Um, and um, I, quite frankly, I think there's some other laws to take into consideration about evicting people. I think there's a three month notice. Um, so I'd ask you to take that into consideration. Um, also, uh, refugees have came to Des Moines from uh, Bosnia and Nepal. Uh, they were giving apartments and uh, large gardening areas. Um, so I'm curious as to why when refugees from our own political and economic system exist right here in the city, they aren't afforded the same respect and basic human di dignities. Um, so I guess my main concern is for the safety of the family and community that I've came to know and love at Stewart Square and um, the community outreach that we've all done. We found people jobs, uh, some people we found them homes, clothes. All of us have chipped in, a lot of people in this room. And um, what we do at Stewart Square to address the homeless epidemic is quite different than, a, than, a, than just a soup kitchen or feeding someone. We invite them into our homes, into our communities. Sometimes we provide them employment. They are working in members of our group and not just an epidemic. So I asked uh, for the motion to extend the deadline by two months. Thank you. I've got a question for him. Yes, sir. Um, you said you wanted to extend from January 31 to March 1st. That's basically one month. Is, is, do I have the right understanding? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my main concern is, and, and ultimately I would like for us to be placed into a garden area. I think that we could really provide a lot of great opportunities for um, uh, for lack of a better term, okay. homeless I just wanted to clarify it because you started off wanting one month, you end up saying two months. Uh, I, I guess I just want one month because I'm worried about the temperature in January and February. And, and March and April is a little bit warmer out. I know we've been really blessed with this warm weather, but it could turn really bad really quickly. Thank you. Clark, thank you. Yes, sir. 
My name is Matthias. I live at 1400 East Locust, which is Stewart Square. Um, I am one of the dis disenfranchised he was speaking of. Um, I'm just kind of here to speak my piece and say my story. At 17, as, a man as an emancipated miter, I joined the United States Marine Corps. I was received a dishonorable discharge for failure to fire under a direct order because I would not fire upon three children kicking a soccer ball in Afghanistan. Um, my thing is, is while me personally, I may be able to handle the cold weather, I'm not ready for that. You know, my choice is at this time, if you shut down this camp, are the river. Um, I'm not allowed at certain shelters for various reasons, none of them having to be alcohol, none of them having to be drugs, none of them having to be violence or criminal activities. Simply fact is, my choices are to go to the river, or head south for the winter. I don't feel that I should have to leave my home, the city that I've called home my whole life, just because you want to shut down a camp. And that's my piece. Matthias, thank you. Hello, my name's Lynn Burgett Wood. I'm at 313 Southeast Wanda Drive in Ankeny, but I used to live in Des Moines. Um, and I've been part of Occupied Des Moines since day one. Uh, the Des Moines Parks and Recreation Department has simply stated that it will no longer give Occupied Des Moines a permit for overnight camping past January 31st of this year at Stewart Square. Um, I'm on a committee for getting our members together for the decisions and the removal of Occupy's equipment and supplies. And we have many items, uh, including the four big tents, which will require many hands working together and time to get them down and to be removed. Uh, many of us work and have other obligations that can affect how often we can get together to do this. Um, the major reason for me to address you here today is to express the importance of how it would be difficult to take down everything uh, be before January 31st. And of course, I don't want to forget, you know, the people who are staying there as well, to be able to get them a, a decent place to stay where they feel safe. So, thank you. My name is Danielle Ryan. I live at 2431 Southeast 8th Street here in Des Moines. Over the past few months, I've watched civil, serv civil servants in cities across the nation set a dangerous precedent that shakes the roots of our American democracy. I've seen the camps of occupation after occupation fall to corpor corporate interests at the expense of our constitutional rights that guarantee free speech and peaceable assembly to petition our government for a redress of grievances with no abridgment to that law. I experienced it myself on October 9th when Governor Branstad had us forcibly removed from the Capitol grounds and again when our permit wasn't renewed the following Friday. Mayor County graciously came to us with the solution to this problem, the permit for Stewart Square. We have peaceably assembled there for almost three months but are yet again facing eviction and the infringement of our First Amendment rights. I would like to emphasize that the Constitution itself has no expiration date. This is more than just a First Amendment issue. We have formed a community in Stewart Square that serves as a constant reminder of the income inequality permeating this country on a daily basis. It also serves as a visual symbol for the, aware, for the grievances we are rallying against our government. It is not a simple camping trip, as civil, certain civil servants would have us believe. Um, just as our forefathers fought against the colonialism that left them enslaved to the British monarchy, we fight against the corporatism that leaves us enslaved to economic elitism. Esteemed mayor and council members, you have before you a decision that is, has possibly a historic precedent. As of now, the Stewart Square occupation has an eviction date of January 31st or possibly sooner. I implore you all to reconsider any eviction. The great poet Robert Frost once wrote, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled, and that has made all the difference. My question to you all is, will you take the road less traveled? Will you start to put people before profit and communities before corporations and allow Stuart Square to exist as an encampment indefinitely as our First Amendment rights guarantee us?
Good evening. My name is Tony Tyler. I live at 1319 30th Street here in Des Moines. Um, I moved here to Des Moines this past summer, and as I uh, prepared to move, I was excited about moving. I uh, knew Des Moines and Iowa in general to be a place of robust civic dialogue. Um, I'd grown up watching the caucus season happening, and as I've spent my time here in Des Moines since then, um, I've, I've been um, pleased to see that that's true, that uh, Des Moines does engage in those sorts of things. In line with that, I would ask that the City Council um, consider indefinitely extending the, the encampment at Stewart Square. Um, I've heard several people say tonight that the encampment represents some sort of a symbol of our civic dialogue and our First Amendment rights. I would go another step to say it's an actual embodiment of our First Amendment rights. I think it's um, a, a, a beneficial thing to our community whenever dissent is encouraged and accepted and heard. And I think that's what the encampment is. It's a physical representation of that. The simple presence of dissent, visible presence, is a powerful thing. I think we would all agree here that to simply show up at something is powerful. Um, if I could, I'd like to ask that all the people here, many of whom we won't hear tonight, could stand who are here in support of, the, um, of not terminating the encampment. Simply showing up here, we've shown that... Um, that we're engaged in a civic process. Thank you for standing. Um, and I think it's in this, the same vein of that that we keep the encampment at Stewart Square. It, it'd be a lot easier to just brush it away and to not see it anymore, but every time we see it, we're reminded that there are strong social inequalities that have to be addressed. They won't be addressed on a nine to five schedule. They won't be addressed simply Monday through Friday, but rather through significant and strong commitment that this community has shown that they're committed to. So I would ask that this encampment stay indefinitely as a reminder of the, of the changes we are striving to engage in. Thank you. My name is Frank Cordero. I'm a Des Moines Catholic worker. I live at 713 Indiana Avenue. Uh, and I, I must say that uh, it was real heartening to hear uh, all of the uh, beginning speakers uh, uh, speak about the work of, works of mercy. Uh, uh, that's what we ran into when we got involved in this social movement, Occupy Wall Street. And you know, as a social movement, I see three things that make it different than other places. Occupy people, occupy places. Uh, our first issue is free speech. And we're trying to find out where the parameters of free speech go. And uh, we're telling you a public park in Des Moines has given us a great place to exercise that. Now, that's something we do with our bodies. And we'll go places with our bodies, because that's the second thing we do. We protest. That's what Occupy is known for. You kick us off here, we'll keep protesting. Because we got an agenda. We're changing the way this country thinks. And uh, the other thing we do is when we protest, we're willing to risk arrest and go to jail. And uh, that's pretty exciting for me. More exciting is how we've been doing it here in Des Moines. We're a model for middle cities all over the country who are going to be dealing with this. So regardless of what happens at the camp, which I sure hope we get to keep it, this is who we are. We're a social movement. We occupy. We protest. We're willing to go to jail. And one more thing, we're nonviolent. And we want to keep it that way. Thank you. Dennis Wolf Keith, 6367 Vista Drive, West Des Moines. Uh, in addition to uh, creating space for political speech, uh, Occupy Des Moines has been uh, serving the unserved members of Des Moines community. Encampments house some individuals who were without other housing. Our daily meals have fed more than would have otherwise gone hungry. We've also worked in connection uh, to connect members of the community with long-term housing, with ongoing medical care, with jobs, and other resources to promote positive, sustainable, secure future for themselves and other families. 
Uh, during their tenancy, the uh, tenancy in Stewart Square sanitation has been excellent. The fact that Parks Department has acknowledged, in addition to our efforts to be responsible for our own sanitation, members of our community have taken over many of the tasks normally performed in the city, including raking leaves, cleaning down tree limbs and other storm debris from park and sidewalk, shoveling snow when there was snow, and removing the trash from the city's trash barrels. We've also made repairs, play playground equipment, even installing a railing to protect children from a dangerous drop in one area formerly protected only by a, a strip of caution tape. The park is cleaner and safer now. Occupied Des Moines has also created new community space in the park, providing new resources and activities to the Capital East neighborhood and all residents of Des Moines. We've held many cultural educational activities in the park, from potlucks to family-friendly dance parties and classes on political and economic issues to visits from the distinguished public figures like the Reverend Billy Talon. Occupied Des Moines has greatly expanded use of the park, making it a vital community center that Des Moines should be proud of. Our library, medical facilities, and daily meals have also served many individuals in the neighborhood and beyond. That brings us to the greatest impact Occupy Des Moines has made in Stewart Square, the one we're most proud of. The central purpose of Occupy Des Moines is to first acknowledge and then address the realities of economic injustice in the United States. Homelessness, unemployment, poverty, hunger, lack of access to health care, lack of access to quality education, and most of all, lack of access to the political system, to our democratic processes and institutions and leadership. Millions of Americans live with these burdens, and this suffering and this this injustice every day, and our political system, our democracy, has failed them. Occupy Des Moines has taken on these issues, joining forces with others around the country to push back against the self-interest of greed that drives Wall Street and big corporations and their political allies, and to restore American democracy, to restore the power of the people of the United States, to govern according to true American values of generosity, equality, and opportunity, and justice. We hear a lot these days about First Amendment rights, about the right to free speech, about the right to to assemble and redress grievances, but the reality of these are responsibilities. When other human beings are suffering, it is our human responsibility to speak out against the causes of that suffering. It is our responsibility to assemble, to protect the unjust policies and institutions in Occupy Des Moines encampment and Stewart Square represents a public space devoted to the exercise of those responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I think what we'll do, we, these five will be the last five uh, to speak this evening. Hi, my name is Ray New. I work at, I live, live at 685 20th Street, Des Moines, and Occupy <coughs> Iowa in Stewart Square Park is important because this is the only means for the 99% of the citizens to peacefully gain attention in light of the following. The corporations own or control the media. I've seen it for myself. The media has consistently misreported Occupy events until so many people were present that the media was losing credibility. Our, our society is far too willing to sacrifice its citizens, the evidence. 20 million citizens unemployed. We are not just discussing underemployment. We're talking about unemployed. Big money corporations have captured our federal and state governments. The evidence, corporate mega dollars, political donations, corporations moving American jobs outside the country, corporations bringing H-1B visa foreigners into the United States to fill American jobs. Corporations have poisoned our air, our food, and our environment. Health care is regulated to a commodity, severely restricting its distribution. State education budgets are being cut, eliminating the possibility of a better future for most children. To, allow the, to not allow this pressure release valve is to demand massive anarchy on a scale that no one here can honestly predict their survival. Occupy Iowa in Stewart Square Park or another downtown city location is important because the 1% has stolen too much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Judy McClure. I live at 654 19th Street in Des Moines. I wanted to say thank you because the city, the city council, the mayor, 
and our police force have really done, I think, a really great job um, in allowing people associated with occupied Des Moines to assemble peacefully and express their opinions about economics and politics in our country. The tolerance that we've all shown for the actions and opinions of others is a really good example to our children and to the rest of the country. Civil discussions and peaceful expressions of opinion we may not all agree with are what democracy means in practice. It's not the fastest nor the most efficient form of government to discuss and disagree and vote, but that is democracy. Fast and efficient government is for monarchs and, and dictators. So <clears throat> let the people occupy our parks peacefully and let us protect the right to assemble and express ourselves peacefully. Thank you. Hi, my name is Linda Foster and I live in downtown Des Moines. And as a small business owner in the city, these folks are representing me because I'm so trying to keep a business operating in the city and in this um, state, which, by the way, the state has been on the forefront of the civil, civil rights. So even if you don't agree with what these folks are saying, if only for the idea that they're holding the space for freedom of speech, um, it just makes sense to not uproot them. The movement will continue. It has been a peaceful movement. I, I just have real trouble finding anything wrong with what they're doing uh, in, in our city park. Thank you for allowing them to be there. I, I hope that you will consider continuing allowing them to be there. Thank you. My name is Reverend Daniel Bragg. I reside at 490 Northeast 45th Place here in Des Moines. I first want to say thank you to a great officer of the Des Moines Police Department, Officer Heberty. This man has been a great friend to us. But second, I lost both of my parents in November of this year, one week apart. It was this family I have here behind me that stood beside me when my own family did not. I'm a farmer. And how I look at this is we're peaceful. We've not done anything wrong. Our First Amendment rights right now are in jeopardy. Not one of you guys up there can say we have done anything illegal, morally wrong. We kept our promise during the caucus. We did not disrupt the Iowa caucus. Not at all. So I plead with you guys that you take in consideration tonight the deadline that you have set forth to the January 31st and kick it back, like one of the other guys said, to lease March. Give us some time. We have tons of people that we're helping. We have one man in our camp who's afraid to leave our camp. I mean, literally afraid to leave. He has been homeless his whole life. Not his whole life, let's go that way, but for the last few years. He's afraid if he goes to a shelter, he'll pass away. I don't want to see that, and I'm sure the city of Des Moines don't want a funeral bill. I know what they run, and they're not cheap folks. So I plead with you guys, as of tonight, to consider moving back the deadline that you guys have placed on us. Let us continue our work, and we'll show you guys we're nonviolent, 100%. <coughs> we'll show you guys we'll keep the park cleaner than we ever found that park. We will keep doing everything we've done in that part going 100%. Like one of the other guys said, we have a 24-hour security team. Probably better than most police departments. We're not paid. You know, we work for food. So, uh, so I mean, it, it's secured. We've not had any, we've not even had the cops down there for any violent from our own people, and there will not be any violent. Again, we're a peaceful movement. So what I'm trying to say tonight is, from a pastor, let us continue our good work helping the people of Des Moines. We feed tons of people. And I thank you guys for this time. My name is Jessica Mazur. I'm from West Des Moines, 3212 Orchard Circle. I know you said only five more, but I was videotaping, so I wanted to jump in. But I know that we can be scary. We're new. We've never seen anything like this before in the history of the United States. And it's hard to accept change. It's hard to accept something new. 
But we're people, just like you. We're people fighting for what we believe in. We stand up for our fellow occupiers, for our communities, for our families, for our friends. That's something that's scary, but it's something that you have to take into reality. We're, we are here, we're helping people. If you look at what happened in the civil rights movement, when they kept getting shut down or anything by the government, they just got stronger, and we're going to get stronger. So you have to just take us who we are. We are new, we are fighting for what we believe in, and please let us stay in Stewart Square. Thank you, Council. Um, my name is Jeremy Richards, and I live at 2925 Woodland Avenue. Um, Everybody's. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you guys for being patient and with us for uh, and uh, allowing us to have our voice. That's important. We all know that's important. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank the Des Moines Police Department for uh, for the way that they, the professional uh, way that they've acted throughout this whole uh, throughout the three months that we've had. So, um, and everything's pretty much been said that I. I think uh, is is pertinent within uh, the the actual occupation of um, the Stewart Square spot. We want to keep it. I mean, I want the, uh, everybody said, you know, please let us stay. So the only thing I have uh, left to say is, uh, me personally, I care about this decision. I care about the uh, what what you guys will do here, and not only that, but I'm also a very very motivated organizer. Okay, uh, I this this these are the issues. The 99 percent. These are the issues that I care about. So uh, if if the decision is made to get rid of uh, the occupation at Stewart Square, please understand that I personally will help organize in your against your reelection campaign. And I. <laughs> I'm I'm not playing, and as, as, and and I'm not uh, I'm not trying to threaten you guys. Yeah, you are. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Here's the here's that, the thing. That sounded like a threat to me. Well, okay. I'm not trying to threaten you into decision. I want you to uh, make the right decision. But I'm saying that there are people on the other side that care about the outcome of this uh, decision and realize that you're motivating people to organize against you. Realize that you're having an impact on individuals across the city. It's not, it's not just about what looks good in, in Stewart Square, what looks good uh, in, the, in the papers. Uh, it's about the people here that, that are organizing for change for the good, for the better, for equality. You know, we, uh, it says on your sign outside, uh, um, celebrate diversity. Diversity of tactics, diversity of uh, um, opinions. We should celebrate diversity, and please allow us to continue having this uh, occupation at Stewart Square. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your patience. I think we appreciate all your comments, and thank you for taking the time to come down. I'm now going to. Uh, uh, turn it over to Councilmember Hensley to discuss the exit strategy and the permitting policy for Stewart Square Park. Mrs. Hensley. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to thank everybody that is here tonight. I appreciate you coming down, and I commend you for a job well done on presenting your case. As you said, many of you did. Um, we may not, may not all disagree. Um, you're accurate. Uh, because you're presenting one side of the story, and unfortunately what we don't have presented tonight are from many of the citizens throughout the community that have expressed concerns. And, and there are a large number of them, but typically when you have an issue such as this, um, you hear from the people that feel passionate about it, and I understand that. Um, when I requested to have this put on the council agenda, I did so because when permission was given to you to go to Stewart Park, there was no exit strategy. There was no discussion about how long are you going to be allowed to stay. And um, our parks are not campgrounds. Our parks are not campgrounds. You cannot even stay in state parks for extended periods of time. That was not the intent. 
Um, and that's why I don't think you heard any opposition. Uh, there was no opposition from myself at that point. But it has gone on and it has become a campground. Now that does not mean that I don't support your, um, your voice. It does not mean that I think that you should not have First Amendment rights. That is the furthest thing from the case. But you have other ways that you can do that. I think that there are costs associated with you being in Stewart Park. Uh, you've talked about some of the things that you've done, but there are, all, there are also costs associated with that. And those costs come directly against our general operating budget, where we're really struggling. So they may not be big, but all of it adds up. I am supportive. I was originally coming in here tonight thinking that, you needed to, that we needed to move up the date. Um, I would agree to go forward with the January 31st date. I think the comments made regarding um, individuals that are receiving support from the individuals at Stewart Park, we have an excellent um, coordinating council that works directly with homeless, and um, I am confident that we will be able to work and find appropriate supportive services and housing for all of those individuals. We've done a great job, and the mayor and myself, and uh, in fact, Mr. Coleman is the uh, chair of that group. So it is not our intent to be harmful. It is not our intent to uh, create problems for individuals. It is my intent that um, we take the park back to being a park. It is not a campground. And that's why I've asked that this be put on the agenda tonight so that we could have the discussion. To be perfectly honest, I think that the discussion has been very positive here tonight. I think you've done a good job presenting your case, but it doesn't mean that I agree with how you're going about doing it by camping in a park because it's not a campground, it's a park. Any of the comments from council? Mr. Coleman? <clears throat> I'd just quickly say I appreciate the uh, sincerity of your comments and um, the, the genuineness that you obviously proved today uh, to the commitment of your mission. The city's here to support your First Amendment rights. I, 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 I think it's well known that um, my, my position is that we have to support you like we do other voices in the community in a reasonable way. Um, but, it, but at some point, the, the, the camping in our park has to, has to end, the overnight occupying of that park. And um, uh, that's why I've um, uh, supported the advice that I've gotten from our police chief, our parks director, our fire chief, uh, and the city manager that that uh, in working with co in cooperation, I know it's not what everybody wants to hear about the January 31st um, date that that's been proposed. But I uh, I am supportive of that, and uh, I appreciate you coming down here. And uh, not everybody's going to agree with your positions, um, uh, but I think my perspective is that that one of the reasons why some people have not been um, that have not embraced your your movement is because uh, it's not been articulated like it has been here. At least people know what you're about, and for that, that I'm thankful that uh, uh, City Hall was that chance tonight to to hear that. Uh, not everybody's going to support you, um, no doubt about that. Uh, but I do think, as a city and as a group up here, we've been very respectful to many different opinions and the people that. Um, that, that disagree with us, that disagree with our policies. I quite frankly love the part of our meetings where anybody that wants to come down and have five minutes to talk to us can do it, and I hope you appreciate that. It's one of the things that makes our city a better place, and it makes us as council members, and I know the mayor, uh, stronger in our roles because we hear from folks like you. So thanks for coming down. I know we disagree um, ab ab about uh, a deadline for the overnight work, but I think it is important that um, we're clear about the long-term needs of the city so that you can move your movement to the next step. Brian? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate the, the comments earlier by Christine and Chris. Is, um, I, I think it's important that you have an outlet for your protests. I, I think it's important that 
to, to realize that you can obviously go to any park, any public space you want at any given time, as long as you, I, what I object to, and I think what most of us have object to, it's been stated earlier, is the camping and the perma, semi-permanent structures and permanent structures and, uh, but as far as, you, you know, protesting in Stuart Square Park, it certainly still is available. Uh, it just won't be available to, to camp in. And that's, that's I think, really what we're trying to get at is you still have the ability to use the park. You can go down to the sculpture park and protest. You can go to any park you want to go to and protest. But we can't have people camping out and, and putting up permanent structures. And my point about uh, First Amendment, I heard a lot about the First Amendment. But, you know, I raised the, on the second speaker, I raised the issue of what if this was the KKK that came in and was completely peaceful and did nothing other than is doing what you're doing. And a lot of you objected to that, what I said. But the point is, they fall under the same rights, First Amendment rights as you have. The Tea Party falls under the same First Amendment rights that you have. But we have to set standards and rules in the Constitution. It's ruled by time, place, and manner by which a government can regulate. The time, the place, and the manner that you can have protests and we have every right to do that as a government, but I completely support your ability to go out and protest. Like I said, you can protest Sculpture Park, you can protest in, you know, Ewing Park, you can protest wherever you want to protest, but we can't have the permanent structures, and that's my only point, so. Ellie? Um, I, I was gonna make a couple of comments, but I think they, the three of you did a pretty good job explaining um, the position that I agree with. The only additional comment, maybe to echo what Brian said, is I would like to maybe add a motion, if you'd be willing, um, to refer this back to city legal to review um, some sort of time, manner, and place restriction, not specifically for um, the Occupy movement, but moving forward as to... Um, how we can limit we, we camping long-term. You're saying we um, need to have for, a policy. For a policy. And, and part, but part of that policy, just to add to your amendment, is to make it clear that we cannot have permanent and semi-permanent structures. Right. Correct. Right. Um, and maybe I would go a step further than a policy and perhaps putting it into an ordinance. Um, and, and I do want to be mindful of issues that may come up if the Boy Scouts want to camp out in the park overnight. I, I think staff should have some discretion in that, um, but limited to a night, two nights, not indefinitely. Um, and I would like to have some sort of time, manner, place restriction ordinance brought back to the council. And I don't necessarily have a time frame. Um, maybe in, so that in the next or, month. Or two would, night restriction would yield to the time piece of the uh, of that restriction. Right. Uh, did city legal understand my comment? Yep. Well, as John said, it was about the second or third Saturday I decided to stop up at Stewart Square to see what was going on. And uh, I will say when I left there, I was very comfortable. Uh, I was impressed with what I saw going on there. They were even recycling. Um, Jessica made the statement that maybe you're scary and uh, this has never been seen before. Well, I want to remind some people in this room that will understand this, that in the late 60s and early 70s, we had some people we referred to as hippies. I, I, th I think I was one of those, and yeah, they were scared back then, but it came and went. But the, the uh, message is just about the same. Um, Aaron Briggs uh, said that we should be working with you and not against you. And I want to remind you of the fact that our mayor took the lead on this, and he took a different lead than just about every mayor in the country did. I'm just as proud of them as you are. I've been with them when mayors from other cities have called where they had problems and said, how are you doing it? How come you don't have problems? And he said, 
we've got a good line of communication, we've got an understanding and agreement, and both sides are living up to those agreements. The one thing I'm going to ask you is that regardless of there's going to be an end date. I think that's everybody's aware of that, of the occupation of Stewart Square. Regardless what day that is, please do not repay our mayor in a negative fashion. You've been allowed to be in that park because of our mayor. Um, personally, um, you've asked to go on March 1st. I was ready to vote on January 31st. I think it's important that you've come in here and asked for a date. You asked us. Um, stay until March 31st. Can I see any harm in it? The, the most harm I could see is to the turf, and believe me, I've got a uh, background in uh, horticulture. Um, even some golf courses cover their golf greens for the winter. The turf up there is in uh, dormancy now. Um, anybody that's been to the state fair in August and seen what a million people can do to the turf in 10 days, it's amazing. A week or two later, you can't tell they've been there. I have been monitoring the situation up there, um, seeing people using the playground every day if the weather permits. Um, I'm, I'm going to take the lead from the mayor on this, but um, I think personally that uh, since they asked was March 1st, we ought to go March 1st. The other issue is you're looking for somewhere else to go. Um, I would like the city manager and staff to take a look at that. One place that comes in mind to me is the area immediately across the river from uh, the Botanical Center. There's absolutely no use for that area down there. be easy access for you. You wouldn't have electricity, but um, just about everything else would be the same. But I do want to make a statement for those of you that have been up in the park. I'm proud of you, the way that you've uh, conducted yourselves, peaceful, civil, and clean up there, and I think it speaks well for you. Well, I think that uh, this issue has been pretty well covered. I thank you for coming down and explaining your position. I think that... Uh, you gave me a little bit of different aspect of what I thought about this, but um, there, like Skip says, there's got to be a date set, and uh, we'll see what that date is by what comes from the council here tonight. But I appreciate your efforts coming down and talking to us. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming down, not only tonight, uh, but the way that you've handled yourselves uh, since the inception of this occupation, uh, certainly, uh, it, especially uh, uh, on the city grounds. Uh, we uh, have gotten, gotten nothing but uh, uh, really good reports regarding how you've handled yourselves. And for that, I, I personally want to thank each and every one of you. I think that, that uh, there are concerns ongoing about uh, a, a permanent camping ground, so to speak, uh, for occupiers. I think that the, the words that you have need to continue. Uh, you know, and I would say that it, when people are passionate, uh, as was mentioned uh, by Brian earlier, whether it's the, uh, uh, the Tea Party or the NRA, if they handle themselves the way you folks handle themselves, I'm willing to have an open discourse with them as well. I will tell you that uh, we probably would disagree on a number of issues. But nevertheless, if they handle themselves the way you folks have, uh, we would hopefully uh, provide them an opportunity to do it. But I would say that based upon the discussion we've had here this evening, uh, I think that we need to uh, refer to the city manager and the staff uh, for a uh, reasonable uh, um, uh, outline of how we should, moving forward, handle uh, these kinds of situations. Uh, it's my understanding that the staff has given you a uh, um, sort of a directive in terms of, of when this occupation uh, should end. And, I, and uh, I think, as was pointed out by a number of our council members, that doesn't mean that you can't go to, back to Stewart Square or other parks around town 
to have that, that discussion, that civil discourse uh, regarding concerns that you have about the future of this country. And I would encourage you to do that in places not just at Stewart Square, but all around the city of Des Moines and all around this country. I think that elected officials need to hear you. And I think that uh, you folks uh, have had a loud voice, and I hope that uh, the, the discourse continues on all subjects and all issues. But as we look at the, the occupying of a specific place, I think the uh, staff, for a number of reasons, has looked at, uh, at a time frame, and uh, uh, they felt that probably uh, at the end of this month is, is that time. I uh, um, would hope that, that we do uh, ask them to come back with uh, some reasonable uh, time, manner, and place uh, um, exceptions to those occupations, and uh, which are well-defined and, and clearly laid out so everybody understands what they are. But I, again, I want to thank you for everything that uh, uh, you have done and the, and the insights that you've given this council and uh, indirectly through this news media, the rest of this country, and show people how Iowans have this discussion and talk about issues concerning the future of this country. So thank you all very, very much for your work. Mr. Mayor, now, did generally you speaking, I don't make motions, so I'll ask somebody to, uh, to make one. Sometimes I'll ask somebody I to make will. one. You, you can make a motion, though, and I would allow you to make the motion that you just discussed, which would be to follow the recommendation of the city manager or the staff for the January 31st and to refer it back, uh, city manager, legal staff, all the other appropriate staff on time, manner, and place, and a policy slash ordinance that would come back to the council. Does that summarize your... Summarize, but I think that uh, uh, Brian had some comments. I think, does that cover uh, uh, the issues that you had and anybody else? I know that Skip was uh, had uh, followed up on a suggestion by uh, somebody to uh, on a on a date specific. I think that it does uh, uh, give everyone about almost three weeks to uh, to make certain arrangements. Uh, well, I know that a number of people would hope that it would. Uh, uh, go on uh, longer or indefinitely. Uh, I think that the, the your movement is going to go on indefinitely, and uh, hopefully will will be loud and clear to uh, to the rest of the country. But, but in the but meantime, it, yes, it is important to note this can go on for as long as you want. But the permanent structures, the tents, the things you have there, and I know nobody's there sleeping in these tents <clears> at night. I like Skip. I went through. I just didn't tell you I went through. Okay? You had no idea who I was. But I'm telling you, or I'm, what I'm asking is, you can certainly, what I'm saying is you can certainly protest and do everything that you want to do. But you just, we have to remove the permanent structure. Is that, I mean, that's, that's fair to say, right, Jeff? That, that's a, uh, certainly a council decision uh, as to whether or not to remove the permanent structures. By January 31st is what we're saying. Correct. I think we have a motion on the table. Do you have any amendments, Mr. Coleman, or are we ready to go? Nope. All right. I, we are ready to go, yes. So the motion is uh, the 31st and then referring it back to staff. Correct. Yes. brought back at a future council right. meeting. Uh, can, I, can I just ask for no, no comments at this point? No. Nope. We can talk to you afterwards or you can talk to the staff afterwards. Yeah. And hang on. We've got a vote uh, going on here. Just say we'd like to observe uh, what we've been doing with the Iowa Council Meeting Act. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I think the city's going to be doing things. It's okay. It's okay. All right, Mr. Moore, Mr. Mahaffey. Six yes, one no. All right. Um, did you have one question? Yeah, uh, I, I just uh, when the. Would you want to step forward real quick? Uh, when the city does the the the. Like you guys are talking about the, the policy, yeah. The, well, yes, policy, but uh, specifically for this uh, uh, upcoming deadline, uh, uh, I I feel like the uh, Occupy would like to have, for transparency's sake, like just have a, a two representatives, male and female, like just come and be involved in. Uh, I mean, you guys are just operating 
uh, and making making this decision, right? Could we have somebody there too? But you'll have an opportunity to have input, you know, once it comes right. back. It, there'll be plenty after, of public process after it's already like. Well, no, just, they'll they'll give us a recommendation, right. and then it'll come back for we'll council discussion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like like in this meeting, so you can come back and and listen to that, and if you have any input. Give it to us at that time, Mr. Manager. Well, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, just so we're clear, there's two aspects here. Mm -hmm. With respect to the 31st date, we're, you're operating now under seven-day permits that are issued by the Parks Director. Uh, and we've going, been going through that process, I think, each week with you. That that process will continue, mm -hmm. and there'll be stipulations in that in that uh, in that permit that you provide that are similar to what you've had in the past. Those stipulations will continue. So there will be dialogue, and we'll continue to meet with you on a weekly basis during that period up until the 31st. The other aspect that's been talked about here is a policy with regard to future uh, situations like this. That policy will come back to this council for debate in public session, and you would be, I'm sure, welcome to attend and participate. Yes, and that, that was exactly what I was. Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right, thank you all for attending. We'll move on now to, um, at 5.54, uh, to our regular agenda in hearing items, which will be item 40. Let's take about a one-minute uh, break while the uh, chamber clears here. Nobody. All right, let's uh, reconvene our city council meeting on item 40 on the conveyance of city-owned property adjoining 700 Locust Street to 0906116 BC Limited for $5,000, council communication number 12-009. Anybody here to speak on this item? 
I'll move item 40. Any discussion? Item's been moved. Six guests. Seven. Item 41, on the conveyance of permanent uh, water main easement to the Des Moines Water Works for the Grand Avenue over Walnut Creek Bridge Replacement Project. Anybody here to speak on this item? I'll move 41. Item 41 has been moved. Council discussion? Seven yes. Item 42, and on the request from Hugh Nungan uh, to rezone 1435 University Avenue from R3 multifamily residential to limited C1 neighborhood retail commercial to allow for retail development plan and zone commission recommends denial. Uh, roll call uh, contains alternatives for denial or approval. Anyone here to speak on this item? Seeing none. Anybody have a motion on this one? Mike, has anything changed since the last meeting? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Michael Ludwig, Planning Administrator for the City of Des Moines. Uh, no, we've not received any additional information from the applicant on this. So we talked with them numerous times about trying to acquire some additional property or lease some additional property for parking. Uh, they were they've not submitted anything at this time. So and we haven't heard from them in the last two weeks. Uh, our staff talked three with weeks. them this morning, and uh, I don't, they're not here this evening that I'm aware of. So okay. uh, I think they were our staff made them aware that the recommendation was for denial. Uh, they are aware they can come back at a later time if their application changes or if they get additional property. I believe they may be pursuing a single-family house on the property also, so, okay. which would be allowed under current zoning. Okay. Mike, can they also go to Zoning Board of Adjustment if we deny it? Uh, they could seek a use variance. Uh, I think uh, at this point what they've discussed is a single-family house on the property okay. with possibly a home occupation. Okay, thanks. But that would require part of adjustment review also. Perfect. Don't don't use the word occupation. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being the case, I would uh, move to deny item 42. Seven yes. Item 43 and the request from an Imperial Properties Inc. to rezone 4141 East 14th Street from C2, general retail and highway-oriented commercial, to M1, light industrial for chrome plating operation, and to continue to April 23rd, 2012, at 5 p.m. Anyone here to speak on this item? See, oh, we do have a speaker. All right. Tammy Jacobs, 2404 East 11th, and I'm just asking for a 90-day continuance. How are you operating? Did did the staff work with you to help address some of the issues so that you can? The staff has gave their recommendations, and uh, a lot of that seems to be out of reach at the location that we're at. So we're trying to pursue other options. But it it does not look like that building will be able to you know without a variance. Uh -huh. um, it doesn't look like that that, that building will be suitable. So um, is the staff working with you also to identify possible locations? Um, not really. We, um, you know, I guess we were just going into the continuance here for now. Okay. I would think that the staff could be working with them. Well, at I, the same time they're doing. Yeah. I, I, Mrs. Hensley, council members, I think as they identify other locations, uh, the then staff will, will certainly right. work They'll with work, them in right. terms okay. of validating those sites and reviewing those right. from a code compliance standpoint. Uh, so, yeah, I think we are going to continue to work with them and support them. Mike, anything you want to add to that? Okay. okay. Very good. Bob, you want to make yeah. a motion with some directive? I'm going to make a motion that we uh, uh, approve continuation till uh, April 23rd in hopes that maybe something can be worked out. But, uh, you know, continue to look for other spots for sure. Yeah. And work with staff if you would. Yeah. Seven yes. Make note that the hearings 
are now complete at 602. All right, that takes us back to item 38. Uh, this is a communication from Bob Wessel of 212 University to speak regarding finances. Is Bob still here? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse the cold. It's been a while since I've been here. For you two members at the end there, I used to be a little active in trying to give some counsel to our counsel. Mm -hmm. And you weren't here too, too much long, either, Meyer. <laughs> I read this article, and this what prompts me to come here. It's entitled, Members Indicate Backing for Proposal to Increase City Revenue and Cut Spending. Well, I've addressed this years ago. Here's a portion that really has propelled me. A local option sales tax could be the most beneficial avenue for Des Moines. <coughs> Mr. Clark said in a recent interview. Now, we're somewhat in my area of expertise. I studied taxation years ago, but hasn't left my head. This is probably the most hideous tax that's ever been invented. It is the most regressive tax that you can imagine. And I can't believe that it was even thrown on the table. It's immoral. It should be thrown off the table before you people actually start even giving it any thought. You know... You're talking about sales tax, Bob? Pardon? talking about a sales tax? Yes, I am, sir. All right, thank you. None of the seven of you should even remotely, you may be a little befouled in your budget, but that's not the way out. I've been studying maybe some other avenues, but at the moment, let's get this one out of our mind. You know, here a few years ago, the uh, Greater Des Moines Partnership proposed a sales tax. Well, I located 22 communities in the three-county area that they wanted this sales tax. A third, they had a good selling point, a good strategy. They, they said a third of it would reduce real estate taxation. A third of it would be given to the various governments in the three-county area, which was inducing, of course, to the three, to the communities. And, of course, they would keep a third of it. Well, on its face, it was sort of silly, because why would we give a third of a tax to the very people who didn't need any more money? Anyway, I, I fought it. I, I contacted the mayor in 22 cities. I lettered to the editors. I did what I could. And that thing didn't go down by a little vote. And you, and you people would have to put this up to a referendum. Right. It didn't go by 51 to 49. It went down by 85 to 15. So that shows you what the people think of a sales tax. So I want you to do your best to get it out of your head. And I, I'm very disappointed that it was even thrown on the table at all. We recognize 
that it's a sort of a perpetual tax. You know, I'm going to read one little article here, and then I'll let you go your way. Uh, we've got to change the way we run this government. We've needed to do that for, for years. I was back here in, what, 06 with this. These are the people that, in 06 that had an income from our city, city employees, of over $70,000. Not the people under 70, just the people over 70. These are single-spaced pages. That has been one of our fallacies. We Bob, have never... i to kind of wind it up. Pardon? You okay. have to reach your time. Okay, but I do want to read this, if I may, Mayor. It might be a thought of all the people to write it. It's Albert Einstein. He said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we use when we created them. So we've got to get off this dead center thing. Have a good evening. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. All right, motion to uh, receive, receive his comments. Seven yes. Uh, item 39 is from Chet Gwynn of 1041 8th Street to speak regarding changing the name of Nolan Plaza to Nolan Peace Plaza. Now, Chet Gwynn, I do reside at 1041 8th Street, and this is a follow up to. Uh, the report that we made to the City Council on November 21st. At that time, we provided you with copies of the uh, legal process for naming or renaming public property. And in brief, the Council has the sole authority for naming, but citizens may petition the Council to request names. So I'm here tonight to present you with a petition. There are almost 400 signatures on this, and um, it's a very easy thing to do because it has general acceptance in the community. I'll move to receive and file the petition. Pardon? I, I'll move, move to, to receive and file, file your petition. Oh, thank you. Just thank you. Petition. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, I think I'll just open up for questions because it's such a simple thing. I've really enjoyed the uh, co <laughs> council meeting so far. It's been a... Uh, really enlightening and uh, <laughs> very healthy kind of dialogue. Uh, this is a simple one. Uh, we're just adding one word. Nolan doesn't, we're not asking that to be taken out. It's not being called the Gwynn Peace Plaza or the Clark one, I guess. <laughs> but uh, just simply adding the word peace in there to give it more significance, symbolic significance. That piece of property is at the heart of the city, at the heart of the whole state. And peace is a worthwhile theme to emphasize with that piece of land. So what questions do you have about it? I, I got to tell you, I love this idea. I think it's great. And um, I don't know what the process is, but I really do like the idea of doing that. Thank you. All right. We um, do have a, um, if I could just, we do have a policy chat. And I've gone back and obtained a copy of the policy. And um, there, the, the uh, appropriate procedures would be for us to refer it back to the city manager's office and the appropriate departments. Park That's fine. Um, but the procedure but a is. Couple of, a couple of other things, just to make sure that there's um, the fact that it's already named after the Nolans. Um, there is in the policy, if the, the criteria, criteria for naming, that um, preference and priority be given to those entities that already have not been named after an individual. So I think protocol would recall would require that we go to principal financial group or the Nolan family and have some discussion with them. So I mean that's part of the policy. I would disagree with that being a necessity, but well, I hope we can keep it go. going and, and, and not have the process stall and move it forward. I think it's been a while since you've been here and uh, hopefully we can move this forward in a timely manner. I'll give you a copy of the policy here. Okay. Yeah. 
So I will move to receive and file the information, refer it back to Rick, Parks and Rec Department, so the process can begin through, and it'll show you in there the, the process for naming of... Um, Do I understand you that citizens don't have the right to initiate this change? We no. don't have to go back to the original family? It was no, it, it's, it clearly you have the right to um, request the change in there, and it talks about the process that you go through. But when it's already been named, it already has a family name on it, which this does, then it does make reference to how that should be handled. Okay. I, but there are incidents where we it. have renamed a, a park, like the Cravaro Park. Cravaro and Correct. We changed it and then moved it someplace else. So, I mean, there is there is precedent here, and we'll have the manager look at it. Okay. I hope that we can be involved in this discussion uh, as it proceeds so that it, we aren't blindsided on it. I just... Uh, mm -hmm. I think we should add that to the motion that the city manager work with you and have you in a, uh, to meet with you on uh, at least one or two times over the next month to have that discussion. To keep you informed. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a time limit on this? Does it doesn't say something about there has to be action on a petition in a certain length of time? On our petition? Yeah, there is some recommendation in there as to the expected timeline, I believe, if I read through that. Well, anyway, city manager will keep us informed of what we haven't done or need to do and so on, yes. but we intend to pursue it <laughs> until we get a success, well, it's a conclusion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chet. For, for what it's worth, I like the idea, too. Seven yes. Takes us to item 44, which is schedule of a street cut restoration fees for street restoration work performed by the Public Works Department for 2012, 2013, 2014. Council communication number 12 006. Is there anyone in the audience to speak on this item? Seeing none, could we have a motion? Move. Move. Been moved. Seven yes. Item 45 is approving a, pos a policy to evaluate the removal of existing sidewalks within city right of way. Council communication number 12 003. I find it interesting that we're having a, discussing, a discussion of this and asked to approve this. When we've been talking so many years about trying to figure out how we get sidewalks everywhere. M Mr. Mayor, but, council members, I think this arises from some requests that have come to this council uh, from various folks who have wanted to have sidewalks removed. And it's always a quandary as to how to handle it. Uh, this, this policy is no guarantee that a sidewalk will be removed. And as a matter of fact, uh, are generally we're going to look at these uh, and, and apply a very tough test. Um, the, the council has had a long-standing policy to put sidewalks in, and we've been very reluctant to take them out. But there may be some instances we have to admit where there are no connecting pieces, and the prospects of ever having a sidewalk there are nil. Uh, in those rare examples, uh, perhaps council would want to consider it. The only reason this is here, again, is because you've had requests that have come forward and we're just looking for some consistent way to do it. This, you sh this shouldn't be interpreted as our uh, <coughs> encouraging you to uh, remove sidewalks around the city. Yeah, I read it that way. It's going to be very difficult to get one removed, but we do need a policy in case it does come up. So. Well, if you remember the last gentleman that was here before us, we had the problem where he had a sidewalk that right. was just basically in front of his, his house. He had a title. No, no, it was DeMarco. Yeah. Oh, DeMarco. Wasn't it DeMarco? Yeah, it no, was. DeMar yeah. DeMarco was at the end of one. Shido was the one that's in the middle of the block with no attaching side. That's yeah. Like, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Frank, um, Mayor, on, on this one, there's another issue that keeps coming up, and there are a lot of these single pieces of sidewalk with no attaching sidewalks around the city, and legally they're supposed to keep those clear of snow, and I think that uh, I'd like staff to take a look at that to see if there are some that could be exempt from sto snow removal because snow removal. I think I've heard that before. Um, 
I, I do think that is unfair to them because if the neighbors choose to call in and complain, the city is going to notify them they've got to clear that single piece of sidewalk, and they're, they're, it makes absolutely no sense. Okay, we have, we have a motion? No. no. Seven yes. If one extra item that was added on, it's setting a date of hearing on the sale of Southern Meadows site at 2800 Southeast 8th Street and the adjoining parcels and on the vacation conveyance of city-owned property and approving the proposed development agreement with Hatch Development Company, LLC. Uh, and that is uh, setting the date of hearing for 123-12. And the sponsor is Councilmember Meyer. I'll move extra item one. Anyone here to speak on that item, setting the date of hearing? Seeing none. Seven yes. Uh, Mr. Manager, prior to uh, concluding our meeting this evening, our first one of 2012, I hope that uh, uh, Doug Romig uh, is going to follow through with the statements this evening regarding the homeless issues uh, around the Stewart Square folks. I think that we ought to uh, immediately see what their issues are, find out what the possibilities are of placement, and get these people uh, good, safe places to, to stay and, and uh, hopefully some supportive uh, services to go along with it. Mr. Mayor, That's council members, point. you'd be happy to know that I think between the Parks Department and Doug Romig, they've already initiated that process. And as a matter of fact, I think Primary Health Care, which is one of the service providers, has already been to the site or is, is going there and will be working with the folks there who are homeless. Uh, and we do have resources. So I think that work has already begun. Uh, and I talked to Doug just before the meeting, and I think Don's shaking his head as well. So, yeah, I think we're well underway in terms of I'd like to, to have a report that. back on that and see how each and every one of those people is being uh, handled. We would be happy to Ms. do Ms. Hensley. I was asked by um, a couple of the individuals that um, were here that we put the contact information in the minutes of the meeting so that when they go on to the um, web page and look at the um, what transpired, that they would know or could give information as to where they need to call for the Homeless Coordinating Council. So if we could get that and incorporate that into what we, the discussion we've had tonight. I just told them that they should go directly to United Way, and that's where Mary Lee would, Crowley would be, so. Uh, I think, I think my, my suggestion is a good, a good point of contact would be Doug Romick. I think they're already sort of in so if you can the just process put all that of doing there. that, it would be good. It might even be actually more effective. I think we can get the word out directly to the uh, folks up there at Stewart Square to make sure there's direct contact. So we'll we'll make sure that that happens. That might be more efficient than trying to put it in the minutes, but we can do either one. Both, maybe. All right. Could we have a motion to adjourn? What was it? As we vote, that's Maggie and Jesse Coleman over there. They missed the uh, swearing in earlier, but they <laughs> came late because they probably thought they'd make me sad if they didn't. <laughs> Show up for your big night. <laughs> All right. With that, thank you for coming down. And uh, this meeting's adjourned. Hey, Diane. I'm going to leave.